All right, so today's a little different. We're going to be covering boat size and engine size for long tail mud motors. A little different of an inside video, but uh, let's go ahead and get into it. So today we're going to match boat size to engine size for long tails. Um, boat size is normally a John boat, uh, can be a small layout boat, sneak boat. Uh, normally varying in size from 10 foot up to 16 foot. Once you get over 16 foot, I wouldn't really call it a John boat much more unless you have the very rare like 1836 or a 2048, something that's older. They're not really making too many of those riveted John boats anymore. They're more, uh, they went to the welded side once you went over that 16 foot range. So today we are going to be going over just your normal John boat size. So let's go ahead and pop up the illustration that I made. So as we take a look at this graph, you have 10 foot, 12 foot, 14 foot, and 15 foot John boats. Uh, starting off with the 10 footers. Green means you're good. Light green means you're acceptable. Gray means you're underpowered. And then orange means double check your horsepower rating. You should always check the horsepower rating of your John boat. This whole chart is just a guide, but make sure you check it on your John boat. That little yellow placard, it'll tell you what size engine it can handle. So starting with the 10-foot John boats. That's going to be your three-horsepower range. Harbor Freight, $110, three-horsepower engine. Um, you're going to be good with a 75-inch shaft. So as you can see, your chart, 75-inch shaft, three-horsepower engine, 79cc. These are Predator engines, by the way. Um you're good for a 75-inch shaft. Once you go to a 12-foot, you need to go over to the 85-inch shaft. Uh, gray means it's underpowered. Of course, you can put a mini kit, a three-horsepower engine with a 75-inch shaft on a 12-foot John boat, but it's just going to be underpowered. You most likely won't be able to get on plane, but it will push the boat. So once we get into the 85-inch shaft range, that's your 6.5, 8, and 13-horsepower engines. Again, Harbor Freight, they have the best prices on engines and they're the most available and affordable. Uh, your six and a half, there's two different ones. There's an EPA carb and then just a straight EPA. The EPA carb is like a California friendly one. Um, I would recommend this one, the standard EPA one. Uh, eight horsepower is good. The main difference between the six and a half and the eight is that the eight has a lot more torque to it. I'll go ahead and pull those up for you. All right, so this is your 212cc, 6.5 horsepower engine. Um, dry weight is 37.5 pounds. Your RPMs are going to get up to that 3,800, 3,900 RPMs. But when we go and look at your torque, right here is 8.1 foot-pounds at 2,500 RPMs. Your 8 horsepower is going to be at almost 15 foot-pounds. So not quite double, but still, um, it has a lot more torque going from the six and a half to the eight horsepower engine. When you bump up to the 13 horsepower engine, of course, you're going to be getting more torque, but you also get the just overall more horsepower compared to the six and a half. The most popular engines are the six and a half and the 13 horsepower engine. The eight horsepower just isn't that popular compared with the price it's just, it's stuck in the middle and most people don't go for the eight horsepower engine. This eight horsepower engine, you cannot fit a small kit on because it has the one inch output shaft. That's the shaft that sticks out the back. So you're gonna need a medium kit. And with a medium kit, you can put the eight horsepower on and the 13 horsepower uh, on. So we'll go ahead and go back to that chart. So again, this chart, six and a half, 8 horsepower, 13 horsepower, uh, 1236. You can fit an 8 horsepower on some of the 1236 where they are recommended for 10 horsepower, so the 8 horsepower will fit, but just that's why you, you want to double check. But standard 1232, 1236, a 6.5 and a half horsepower will work. Um, if you want more speed, just use a hop-up kit on that 6.5. and a half. Um, That's normally an intake exhaust and rejet it. And, of course, change out your spark plug and... Um, 
That's how you can get more power for that 1232 or 1236. The issue with putting the 13 horsepower on a 1236 is that the boat gets too heavy in the rear. Your boat will start to squat. So what I mean by that is your boat is rated for a certain amount. Your boat, this is the transom. The bow goes up over here. The weight pushing down here changes your water level. So the six and a half, so you have a six and a half here, your water level's here, your boat is sitting pretty equal if you have it loaded right. When you have the 13 horsepower on, it changes that water level from here and puts it up a little higher. And it may squat this boat so that the boat actually sits like that. That's a little exaggerated, but that's where your water level is going to be. And the issue with having a 13 is that it's heavier, so it's put, putting more force, creating this water level line. So when you get up on plane, you have that wake that goes up behind your boat. And this is a little exaggerated. But when you slow down, that wake gets closer to the boat when you come to a stop. And you run more of a chance of this wake overcoming that transom and swamping your boat, getting water in your boat. So that's why you want to stick with the six and a half for the 12 foot John boats. So once you get into the 14 foot John boats, um, it really depends on your bottom width. For a 32 inch wide bottom, again, this is where you are measuring it at the bottom of your transom. So let's clear all this. So when you measure your John boat, you have your transom. It's normally a trapezoid looking measure here at the bottom of the transom. So right here, we're talking about a 32, 36, 42. That's the measurement that we're talking here, not here. This is the one that you do not want to measure. Don't measure there. So 32 wide, um, depending upon what the boat is rated for, you can most likely fit a 13 horsepower on a 14 foot boat on a 1432. It may be rated for less. It may be rated for a 15 horsepower. It all depends on the boat manufacturer. They don't make these anymore, but they are out there. They're not rare, but they are out there. So I thought I'd put them in. Um, again, an eight or a six and a half horsepower engine will be great. Um, That'll keep it light, and you should get consistent speeds. 13, you're just going to get more speed. Um, you can go with, with any of the 6.5, 8, or 13 horsepower engine. 1436, I believe the most perfect engine size for it is a 13 horsepower. Um, again, you can watch all my videos. The 13 horsepower engine, I get, I've maxed out at 23 miles per hour. Uh, normal speed is like 18 to 20 miles per hour. A six and a half horsepower engine stock is, um, I got 14, 12 and 14 miles an hour. Uh, most people with a very light load on average get about 14 to 15 miles per hour with a six and a half horsepower engine. Uh, of course, if you can fit a six and a half, you can fit an eight, uh, horsepower engine. Um, if you're trying to save money, a six and a half will work. It gets you on plane, but if you're going to have a heavy load, you may want to bump up to that 13 horsepower engine. Um, if you're battling a lot of weeds, 13 horsepower engine or the eight horsepower engine, that six and a half does not have enough torque to eat up grass and mud. So the six and a half is great for a cheap motor. You need speed and you just need to go fishing, have a good time. It's a great all around engine for that. Once you start getting into mud, duck hunting, uh, needing to push your way through some nasty stuff. That's when you need to bump up to the eight horsepower or the 13 horsepower engine. So concerning the shaft length, 85 inch shaft, you're good on a 1436 for the majority of people. If you are racing and you want speeds, you need speed and you plan on going over 20 miles an hour, it would be best to jump up to that 100 inch shaft with the 13 horsepower engine. You're still going to have the medium kit but the 100 inch shaft will treat you better because that weight gets pushed out behind the boat. We'll go ahead and I'll try to draw it out for you. 
So what we're talking about is when the boat goes, you have a wake behind the boat. This may not be to size or anything, but normally you have a wake that goes like this. You have an X in the center. This is normally low in here. This is the high spot. And then this goes out low again. Let's push this out a little more. So you have your transom, bottom of the boat. Uh, your motor is going to be mounted here. Your tail goes out the back. When you're on plane, water level is going to be here. When you're sitting, not on plane, just motoring around, it may be here. Um, so when you're running, it's running shallow. You have the low spot, starts to get up high, and goes back down low. This high spot is this X right here. This low spot is here, and then all this stuff out the back is going out. So again, this is your transom. This is your long tail shaft. This is where your prop is going to be. So when you start going faster, this section here, right in here, will start to go that way. It'll start to push this wake further back. So say this is, for me, it normally happens around 20 miles an hour. So right here, if this is, Let's say 15 miles an hour. Let's now go to this transom, bottom of your boat, water level. So as you see going 15 miles per hour, normally your wake is right here. But now it gets pushed out further when you start going, let's say, 20 miles per hour. Say this length is just for giggles, 85 inches from this point to here. That's why the 85 inch shaft works. But you want it to be no, we need to get rid of this. Let's see how this works. So 85 inches here, that's just your shaft. And then let's say this whole length is 100 inches. But you're going 20 miles per hour. And that puts that weight here, blah, blah, blah. So 100 inches, 20 miles per hour right here. Going 15 miles per hour, it's going to be here. So just trying to say when you go faster, it pushes that wake out further behind the boat. So that's why you would need the longer shaft. So 1436, if you're going faster, the 100 inch shaft would be better. So as soon as you get to 42, 40, 42 inches, you're going to want the 100 inch shaft. Once you get to that bottom width, you're going to have a 13 horsepower engine or bigger. So you're going to bump up to that 100 inch shaft, um, 1442, 1448, 1542, 1548. 85 inch shaft is just going to be too short with that bottom width. So we're going to go to the 100 inch shaft. A uh, 13 horsepower engine, you're going to have a medium kit. 22 horsepower is a V-twin engine, 670 cc's. So this is the 22 horsepower engine, $830. You may still be able to find a 20% discount on that from Harbor Freight with that uh, coupon that they have. Um, torque, they give it in a different spec here. But it's 106 pounds, which is actually a pretty light engine because it comes with the exhaust. So that's a pretty good weight for that. Um, that's going to be your large kit. This is your V-twin 670cc engine. You're going to be putting that on a 1448, your 1542, your 1548. Um, again, with any of these boat sizes, a 13 horsepower engine will work. They're acceptable. Um, you may be underpowered a little bit, but... Um, you're definitely going to be getting on plane and it's not going to be an issue at all. Yes, you're going to be underpowered a little bit, but you're still getting on plane. You're still getting 15, 16 miles an hour. 
it's not overly underpowered like a, a mini kit three horsepower engine on a 14 foot boat you're only going to be getting like six miles per hour or something it's you're not going to be able to get up on plane with that so yes on a 1448 1542 1548 a 13 horsepower engine will be underpowered but um you're still no, still going to be able to get up on plane and move around a 22 horsepower engine is just what most people put on the 1448 and bigger boats you can slap a 13 on it it'll do fine but um most people put the 22 horsepower on it again always check your horsepower rating for your john boat um this image will be on jtatering.com if you want to look at it longer you can just pause the screen take a look at it but if you want to revisit it without going back to this video jtgatoring.com um i'll try to have it set up on google so if you just type in um long tail shaft for boat or boat size and shaft length uh tie long tail shaft length hopefully this will pop up on google and you can just uh, view it from there so this will help you with your shaft lengths and pairing a engine with your john boat so the basic rule of thumb is a 10 foot boat. That'll be a, a mini kit or a three horsepower engine. Your 12 foot boat, that's normally gonna be that six and a half horsepower Harbor Freight engine. 14 foot boat, that's gonna be your 13 horsepower engine. Perfectly sized by the way, I love it. And then your 15 foot boat, maybe a 16 foot John boat if you can find one, but your normal 1542 is going to be that tracker. That's going to be your 22 horsepower engine. So um, I recommend the trackers. The problem that I have with the Illumicraft, Illumicraft no longer makes the 1436. They're only going to be making the 1440. Um, I don't really recommend them anyways, but the problem with this transom is the support is off to one side and it leaves this whole transom vulnerable so it doesn't disperse the weight good and it buckles and folds and i contacted them about it and they said since it was a mud motor and i put it on myself it voided the warranty so they will not warranty the transom failing a uh, tracker will be a lot better as you see the support is in the center and the other benefit of the tracker they may or may not show it um if you can see it on that back end there the piece of wood when you go and look at a tracker they should all have the bolts so you can unbolt it put a new piece of wood in and put it back in um, as you'll see later on uh, this year i'm going to be replacing the transom on my uh, alumacraft because it's failing again and these are all rivets so i'm going to have to drill out all of those and replace it with bolts and nuts uh, the trackers already have all the bolts and nuts. That's what the transoms put together with, so it's easier to maintain or replace if you ever need to. So 1236, that's going to be your 6.5 horsepower engine. The 1436 is going to be your 13 horsepower engine. Uh, just as a side note, the 1236, the 1436, it is the same um, footprint in the water. So the 1236 will sit like this and the nose does more of a sweep. The 1436 has the same footprint in the water here where it starts to bend up, but this just has a longer nose on it, a more, um, a more angled one than straight up. So this here is the same on both boats. The footprint in the water is the same. It's just that the rake is different. So this will be your 1436. This will be your 1236. Again, the footprint is the same. When you go to look at them at the store, you can look at it yourself. But from my eye, it looks like the footprint is the same, but the rake is just more drawn out on the 1436, and that's how you get that extra two foot. The two foot is on the bow, on the rake. It's not on the actual bottom. So just a side note for that. Um, and then the 1542, you get a little bit wider of a bottom. 
can handle more horsepower, so that's why you can go to the 22 horsepower engine in a large kit. Um, again, I always recommend the Swamp Runner Mud Motors kits. Um, this is a great kit compared to the other two that I tried. So yeah, we went over the boat sizes, get a tracker, don't get an Alumacraft. There's also, um, there's Lowe's, L-O-W-E, Low, Lau, however you want to pronounce that. Um, there's G3. Oh man, there's a bunch out there, but for most people, the tracker is going to be the easiest to get. Alumacraft is also pretty easy, but they're, as I said, they're not going to a 1436, they're going to the 1440. That gives you a wider footprint that's going to throw your wake out further behind the boat, and that's going to force you to get a 100-inch shaft. So I would go more towards tracker boats if you could help it. Um, weight is going to be the same on the majority of these. They're pretty much the same boat, same thickness. So this will give you your boat size, your engine size that will fit that boat, and then the shaft length that you should put on that boat with that engine. Um, look down in the description, look down in the comments. There are people who add a lot of great helpful tips, information, um, things to know. So go down in the comments and see that. There's also a Facebook group. Um, I created that on Facebook. There's also a page that has this little sign, Long Tail Mud Motors. This is what it looks like. Um, there's another group that changed their name to look like mine. Made by <laughs> um, that is not the group. Uh, LongtailMudMotors.com with this sign. Um, this is the unbiased one. So go here. Look at that. Um, there's a lot of great people in there that will give you some information, tips, and tricks on your mud motor whichever one you choose to get um other than that that she be so thank you for watching hopefully this will help you pick your your john boat to the mud motor engine that you're going to be putting on it along with your shaft length for a tie long tail mud motor um if you need any more help let me know put it down in the comments until next time thank you for watching this is JT Gatoring.